Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another video on this channel. And today, it's kind of a sad day because we're gonna say goodbye to Dominant Pros on my violin. And I'm gonna let you know why and what made me led to this decision. Oh my God, there's a, there's a lot of sun. Hold on, let me put that to the side. Okay, we're gonna say goodbye to the Dominant Pros and why I'm saying goodbye to the Dominant Pros. Stick around to the end of the video, you don't wanna miss it. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. I do a lot of violin tutorials on this channel and if you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. So that way you get notified for when new violin videos come out. It helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos that help you. So a little while ago, actually as a matter of fact, earlier this year, I thought that these dominant pros were quite good, right? All these four strings, I got the entire set, G, D, A, and the E string that comes with the dominant pro set. Well, that was like back in early 2021. So what do I feel about the dominant pros now? Well, it's kind of a mixed bag because I haven't done much performing up until recently. So in terms of the break in time, I thought the break in time was around two weeks. I thought for about three to four months, um, just by you know regular teaching, not too much performing because back then um, there weren't a lot of performances happening. Finally, now that the world is open, everybody's performing. I'm actually performing a lot more than I was in early 2021, which is really, really nice. My perspective has changed in regards to the dominant pros. And I'm gonna let you know why in a moment, because um, even though these are very interesting strings by, by Tomastic, they have some pros, but they also have some cons. Let's talk about the pros first. The pros are that they are very quick, they are very responsive, and they are very balanced from the G string all the way up to the E string. I actually don't mind the E string. I would say that if you want to get a dominant pro E string with the set, um, make sure you have an extra E string on hand because you know E strings tend to d get dull very quickly. So usually it's a good idea to have E strings to, um, to replace. Either they pop because they're the easiest string to pop or um, just because they get dull. Another great thing about these Dominant Pros is that they're very easy to play on and they felt really nice under my fingers um, right out of the box. I thought that they were very nice. They were, um, they were not this very metal kind of feeling. I felt like there was some kind of magic coating of the strings that really felt like a nice cushion under my fingers. So the playability, um, putting the fingers down, are are really are really great they're really superb but as i said earlier i mean it says on the box it has a shorter break in time you might see on the box a shorter break in time i found it to be again around a week and a half to two weeks so if you're looking for something that can break in right away that will actually sound like to its fullest potential for me it took about two weeks i think in terms of the tunability um, you could say art you could argue like two or three days that the tuning will adjust, the strings will adjust. But to get like the actual beautiful tone of the Dominant Pros, for me, it took about two weeks on my instrument. Now, granted, it may be different on your instrument. You know, your instrument um, could be uh, too dark or it could be too bright in terms of its sound. I found these to be really well balanced. I thought that they were easy to play on. They were great for chamber music. They were great for solo playing. Um, I did a little bit of pit work with them and I also did uh, some orchestral uh, playing with these strings. That actually leads me to the cons of the string. The dominant pros were not made for orchestra musicians. So if you're ever wondering about the dominant pros as, um, as an orchestral string, you might wanna look somewhere else because they do stick out in, in a violin section. I do not recommend it in terms of large groups, large ensembles that has maybe three or more violins in a, in a section or in a group. For pit playing, like musicals, I did like a bunch of musicals this year, just so happens to be like a very musical, ha ha, I just, I just, uh, just made a joke right there. I, <laughs> comment down below if that was lame, sorry about that. So it was very, uh, I did a lot of musicals in this, in this uh, year 2021 and I actually thought that in terms of the projection, I thought it was very good. I was actually able to blend in other instruments like cello, uh, keyboard, um, I thought that was great. My my two cents is that I was playing as solo violin on, uh, on these musical performances. So that is also something to keep in mind. In terms of chamber music, the chamber music 
uh, conversation with the dominant pros are very interesting because when you're playing in the chamber group at first they were the bay as in the strings the strings were kind of sticking out a little too much but as i heard with the recordings um out in the hall like with like with a video camera or just like a basic rec recorder it actually sounded quite good so underneath my ear i didn't hear too much grain with the bow noise i didn't hear any bow noise and I thought that overall, you know, blending with another instrument was okay. I thought it's not as like, not as much blending as you were to do like in an or orchestra, but I got some blending in like, you know, violin, viola, cello, but out in the, in the audience, you know, when we were listening to it, the strings actually sounded quite good. They were able to blend, but also yet have its own voice. And I think that's what's great about the dominant pros is that these strings will allow you to have a voice in uh, chamber music uh, for sure. In terms of solo, uh, solo, obviously they're really great, but in terms of the actual resins of the strings and solo playing, I find them to be very rich. I found it to be pro you know, projecting out to the hall, especially to the very end of the hall, because that's your goal as a violin soloist, is to make sure that the last person who got the ticket at the very back get uh, gets to hear your beautiful sound. And I think you will get these. My 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 guess is that the dominant pros uh, they're running about like hundred dollars a set in this price range there are also other strings out there like eva parazzi eva parazzi gold the piastro perpetual uh just came out with violin strings they started out on cello but then they came out with violin strings and then obviously there's a dominant and of course the tomastic rondos which have been around the scene for a very long time but finally tomastic made it public it's like okay fine you, you string players, you love it so much, we'll just make it public and we'll sell it to you. Another con with the strings, with the dominant pros, is that when you play them for a very long time, they start to really sound not good. They're like, once they're out, they're out. I feel like for me, they still have the resonance, like I'll still get the wonderful overtones of my instrument, but it really doesn't sound good. So I would say like a typical three to four month of use but like three to four hours of playing or practicing a day um, if you're a conservatory student or if you're someone who plays a lot um, I would say that you might get two and a half three months out of this um, if you're um, you know a performer you're a teacher and uh, you practice three or four hours a day or you play while you teach I would say you get maybe three and a half to four months out of this dominant pro you know conservatively i've had these strings for actually a very long time i got them like again early 2021 and right now it's december so i've had these for most of the year because um to be honest i was really lazy to get new strings let's just be real about that so i'm actually in the hunt for new violin strings so go ahead to my community board and i have a poll up to see i want to get you involved into what kind of strings um, I should be trying out next. So should I try out the rondos? Should I try out the vision solos? Cause I haven't played on those in a while. Or uh, do you guys want to hear the Parasso Perpetual? Those are strings that I have not tried also. But the fourth option is like, should I surprise you? You know, should I just get like something out of completely left field and just like surprise the audience on what kind of strings I want to try. So leave a comment down below, or you can go to the community tab and make sure you get uh, involved in the community make sure you hit the poll submit your submission and um, you know hopefully by the end of the month I'm gonna get new strings because I desperately need them goodbye dominant pros you serve me well and uh, if you have played on the dominant pros if you like them if you don't like them leave a comment down below because I want to know your opinion about the dominant pros overall I think it's a good product I think it serves a very specific niche audience in terms of orchestral chamber music, teaching, you know, in terms of like where I would fit these strings, I would probably use them more for the chamber musician than I would for solo or for orchestra. For chamber music and also like, you know, musical pit playing, like if you're the only instrument in the musical pit, these are great. And that's it for me, folks. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, if you like the content of this video, and if you also have watched other videos in the past on the channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. Again, it helps me out as a content creator to provide more violin, you know, product reviews and other tutorial videos for you.
or if you're new to the channel and if you want to you know get back up to speed on what i've been doing on the channel please make sure to watch the recent video and also hit the subscribe button thanks so much and i'll see you in the next one happy holidays